mayoral candidate and former police officer Mark Saunders making a campaign announcement this morning at Sherburne Station about TDC safety. Let's listen in live. Enough is enough. As mayor, my first priority will be confronting city's crime problem with solutions that work. I'll focus relentlessly on fighting crime and its causes. Whether it's your children going to school or you going to work or going to a doctor's appointment, working on a bus or streetcar as a driver, you have the right to feel safe on TTC property. We know these instances of violence and disorder have many complex issues, mental health, addiction, homelessness, and I will have more to say about those issues and I'll address those important points later on throughout the campaign. But right now, we have to put an immediate stop to the violence and disorder. As your mayor, I will put a, place, a plan in place on day one to protect the people riding and working on TTC property. First, we will increase the number of special constables to 200 as a start and we'll make sure that we get them out of cars and make sure they're visible and that they're riding on the subways and stations where they're needed the most. Second, we will transfer the responsibility of the Special Consuls Program to the Toronto Police Service. Third, we will give the Special Constables body cameras to increase safety and for complete transparency and accountability. Fourth, we will install new assist buttons across TTC to help neutralize emerging incidents. And fifth, we will create minimum lighting standards for buses and streetcar stops. We are going to change the culture of safety on the TTC. We will have the latest technology, the best trained special constables, and enforce the rules that exist to protect people. This full plan for keeping people safe on TTC is available on my website, marksaundersfortoronto.ca. As former chief of police, I know what it takes to make our city safe again. It will be my priority number one. Enough is enough. Let's protect Toronto's future. And I'll answer questions. Can uh, get a response uh, to um, Brad Bradford, who put out a tweet, an attack at essentially uh, basically saying that despite to keep your promises to keep communities safe, that murders were up 63%, that you abandoned traffic enforcement and wasted taxpayers' dollars by changing the color of police vehicles. What's your response to that attack at? Yeah. My response is simple. If you ask people right now if they feel safer now than when I was chief of police, the answer is no. People do not feel safer. That's why I'm running. That's why I'm out of retirement. Number two, as police chief, I made it very clear. We're not going to arrest our way out of the situation. When we talk about TTC and the incidents, the random incidents, the disorder, a lot of it are social issues. Other agencies have failed to hit the mark. As mayor, I will have access to all of those tools, and you will see a change, a noticeable change, within a short period of time, and I'm excited at this opportunity. At this point, you're, there's more than four candidates at this point that have come out with their own TTC plans. How generally will they be able to differentiate your plan at this point? It's starting to get a little clouded in terms of all the messages from all the different candidates about what's going to be done on the TTC. Well, I will tell you, I will use my 38 years of public service on force as my guiding principle. I have worked this city. I understand crime and disorder. I understand how to deal with violent crimes, and I understand the importance of the social issues and how to address those. My plan is different because it's actionable right away. It has the ability of using existing resources. It has the ability of putting Toronto Police Service in charge of security of TTC. It will have stronger, sorry, stronger training capabilities. It'll have more abilities to scale up and scale down. And you'll start seeing things immediately. All the other plans, barriers, things along those lines. When we're dealing with social issues, I will invest money in people over products on any given day because they will work. And, and so moving forward, those plans will take a long time. And a lot of them involve adding other layers of government and having ambassadors and things along those lines. I'm not going to waste taxpayers' dollars. I'm going to use the resources to the maximum result to get the maximum effect on what we're doing, and that is changing the culture of safety on TTC property. Why do you want cameras on TTC constables? Why go that far? 
Because the public will demand that, number one. And number two, as I've stated, the vast majority of issues when it comes to the disorder and it comes to the petty types of crime, it's important that we understand that there has to be an element of compassion to this. We will have other agencies involved when it comes to dealing with people that live with mental health and all those other social disorders. They will be involved as well, and I'll speak in more detail than that. But right now, we need to make sure that the public sees that what is going to happen is right. It will be meaningful, it will serve purpose, it will add value to community safety. Mark, another fellow candidate, uh, Anthony Fury, has also criticized your support on the status quo on drug injection sites. Uh, what's your response to that, and what's your response to many people in the community who feel that many of these drug injection sites have made their communities less safe? Well, Mr. Fury didn't listen to what I said. I, I never said status quo is acceptable. In fact, I said the exact opposite. In 2018, when I was chief of police, I was asked to support harm reduction, and I do support harm reduction. I had key and critical concerns. Number one, the effect on quality of life that it would have in the city, and especially in the areas where it's located. And number two, how it will increase the resources of law enforcement. Those are two critical concerns. And right now, today, why I'm running is because those two concerns have manifested. When you are downtown right now and you see what's going on, government has turned a blind eye to it. I will not turn a blind eye to it. When you talk to the BIAs and the people that own businesses there, they are devastated at what's happening there. Harm reduction is important, absolutely. The how is what's going to be key and critical in order to make this work. Uh, Mark, uh, you talk, you've positioned yourself as a law and order candidate, and you talk about the city and how the city is broken, but you were chief of police for a long time, not that long ago. And there are a lot of people who are critical uh, saying that you bear at least some of the responsibility for the current state of the city uh, because you were the, the top dog, the chief of police. So don't you bear at least some of the responsibility for the current state of the way things are because you were the chief for such a long time? We all bear a responsibility, whether we normalize, but I will tell you right now, as I stated right from the st start, Government is responsible for the basic responsibility of keeping communities safe. Government. It is party of whole. It is law enforcement. It is social entities. When we look at downtown right now, the policing issue is secondary. There are people right now that are not living in a way that they choose to live. There is no dignity going on. You have to have those outward-facing resources there and available working with. Now, the law enforcement piece to that is to make sure that those environments are safe so that the real workers that are going to make a difference, a long-term sustainable difference, have the ability of applying those skills and traits. It is all of us that's responsible. But, but, if, but if you're looking at, if you're a voter in the city and you're positioning yourself as a law and order candidate who can clean this up and they think, well, you were already chief and these problems existed when you were chief, why would, should somebody vote for you thinking that you'll be any different than when you were chief for those, for those five, years, no. five or six years? And on June 26, the voters will decide. I bring 38 years of law enforcement experience to the table. None of the others do. I have worked with all levels of government. No one else has done that. When you talk to running a billion dollar entity for five and a half years, 7,400 people, I bring that to the table. The people know this. I am going to be the best selection when it comes to reducing crime and disorder in this city because I am not going to overlook it like what is happening right now. Mark, a lot of what you're talking about today regards uh, is in relation to TTC, but we've seen the memos from the head of security for TTC. We've seen Rick Leary uh, basically tell people to stand down. So special constables, you can add more, but if they're not told to enforce the law, what difference does that actually make? No, it's the sum of all parts equals a whole. There needs to be first a presence of sworn special constables. I ride the subway on a regular basis, uh, and I do not see them. I simply don't see them. By adding, we have an opportunity of having that presence. And I'll tell you the other thing, too, that's really important that we're, that we're not talking about. The button that I'm talking about right now is different than the help button. That help button that has the signs under it saying if you hit it, you could be liable to $500 penalties, this, that, the other, and it shuts things down immediately. When I'm talking about an assist button, it deals with 90% of the issues that are going on. When you ride the subway, you see people that are in harm's way, that need help. Nobody wants to make that phone call because they don't want people arrested. They want people to get help. For example, yesterday, I sat there at Eglinton. I saw a person come in, sit down, 
light a cigarette, started drinking alcohol. You don't need the police for that, but you need a presence there. And as soon as you have a presence there, that's what this button is all about. It makes the command center aware, utilize the cameras to see what the issue is, and then having the resources that exist, dealing with it the proper way. This is different. Most people will not go through layers to help. By getting your phone, hitting star, whatever, and answering questions, who you are, where you're at, people don't want to do that. They want to help genuinely, and the more layers you take off, the more, the more people are going to use those buttons, and we'll see a noticeable difference. But, but the special constables, I mean, if you've seen the memos, they're effectively told, if you arrest somebody, if you intervene, you will be investigated. Um, you know, it seems to send the wrong message is what special constables have told me. So how do you fix that? It, you just add more special constables, but if the, the head of the TTC, Rick Leary, is telling people, don't get involved, don't do anything, turn a blind eye, how will adding special constables help? Well, I, I won't speak to what Rick Leary said because I, I don't know exactly how that was worded or what was said, but I can tell you this. The Toronto Police Service is going to take ownership of the security measures. TTC will make sure people get to and from safely. Toronto Police Service are experts in security. They will be dealing with this. There will be a higher caliber of training. There will be an opportunity of utilizing all resources when things become more urgent, and the ability to collapse is necessary as well, too. And we know the most number of calls are those that will warrant the special constable um, criteria to be there. So utilizing that and all the other things that I've put into play, as I said, is something that can take effect very soon, very soon. And so I'm looking forward to that opportunity to make that happen. We have to bring the culture of safety back to the transit system. We're at 70% usership right now. Most people are afraid to use it. When I'm listening to the news and I'm listening to a little girl talking about she doesn't use the TTC because she wants to be involved in sports events, but she's afraid to get on the subway because in the morning there aren't enough people and at night it's dark. Whenever people change their behavior because of fear, we have lost. We have lost, and I'm going to change that. That is the number one issue, and that is going to be my main platform piece on top of housing, on top of affordability, and all those other things. But right now, what keeps people awake at night is safety and security, and I'm here to say as mayor, I will restore that. The numbers speak for themselves. The people that I've heard speaking over and over again, and you have to understand this, some people have TTC as an option because they're doing better in life. But here we are bringing in newcomers. I came in as a newcomer. I had to rely on TTC in order to get to and from work every day for weeks. People don't come here with bikes and cars. They rely on transit. And Toronto has the most robust transit system in North America. They're coming here to get to and from their work so that they can raise a family, so that they can have jobs, great jobs. And that's what it's all about. And so for those people that have to use the subway, I want to make sure that they are safe. It is government's responsibility. We can't turn a blind eye to that, and that is going to be my number one priority. People will use it when it becomes safer. So in terms of existing resources, you talk about that this can be done immediately. We've seen service cuts in the TTC because we don't have any money. Like, where exactly will the money come from? In the short term, and then it sounds like you're also talking about increasing the police budget. Like, what is the actual costing plan that you have to make sure that this can actually happen? I'm running because I'm saying it's a priority. And when it's a priority, it will get done. First thing I'm going to be doing is looking exactly at where the books are right now, where the City of Toronto is, what the City of Toronto is spending on, and I'm going to make this a priority. And in order to make this a priority, it is collective working with every councillor and every entity. This is a problem that's not just about law enforcement. Every agency has to be on board. Removing the silos is one of the very first components to success. I will be doing that. Mark, I'll you, take two more questions. You were talking about presence uh, at the TTC and numbers. Um, over in January and February, when there was 80 additional officers that were assigned to patrol the TTC, the numbers indicate that the number of violent incidents were actually down. But the reason that this program is not continuing is because of money and, and finances. And there's the criticism that the city is prioritizing the finances over the safety of TTC riders and its commuters and its staff. So what's your reaction to that? If this program was working, what would you as mayor do? Would you reenact that program? Would you have more of those police officers patrolling? Well, first off, that was a short-term fix. I am talking about long, sustainable, cultural change of safety. That will take time. 
We will be putting the right parts in place to make that happen. We will be utilizing all of the necessary tools to make that happen, and we will get it done. So when we talk about the uh, involvement of Toronto Police and the other agencies, we have to build up those agencies as well too. We have to have that compassion with what we're dealing with. We have to have that, and it has to be a priority. And how do you balance in terms of the compassion uh, versus, you know, some of the outrage from a lot of residents who are living near many of these injection sites who say that, you know, the city is providing a safe haven for people who are dealing with mental health crisis, who are dealing with severe drug addiction, who are then going and breaking into their homes, defecating on their property, discarding needles in their community, harassing people in, in public parks. H how do you balance that in terms of meaning the compassion of these individuals and also so the city, who people who are just outraged that our, our city, our yeah. transit system is less safe. Well, I'm glad you brought that up because that is a discussion that is not happening at City Hall. As mayor, that is the very discussion that I'm going to be bringing at City Hall with the councillors. Over and over again, there have been a lot of segments of community that have not been heard. I will make sure that I fix that. Every voice has a voice at the table when it comes to what we need to do with the city's taxpayers' dollars, with the quality of life in this city. That's what I'm bringing to the table. That's why I'm running for mayor. And that's why the city is going to be safer than it is now, because you have my guarantee that that's what's going to be happening. I'll take one more question. Okay. Thank you very much. Mark Saunders for Toronto.ca. Thank you.